Ladies and gentlemen, I have a question for you. How many threads do you want with your processor? Well, as we all know, processor thread counts are starting to go up rather quickly. More specifically, the core count of modern day processors is four cores is kind of standard, eight cores if you're running a hyper-threading processor. But Intel have been criticized, particularly with the Skylake range of processors, that that's just not enough. And many expected the 6700K or equivalents to feature considerably more threads. If you fall in that camp, then you might well be interested in the Broadwell E family lineup. So, the Broadwell family naturally succeeds the current range of Haswell E. Now, Haswell E, as you know, has a max number of cores, which is 8, with 16 threads. That would be found on the 5960X. But the high-end Broadwell E, which, by the way, is on a 14NM processor node, so pretty much the same as Skylake, and the high-end is the 6950X, it runs at 10 cores and 20 threads, which is pretty darn impressive. Moreover, the max number of ca the max cache, rather, ma rather not the max number, but the max cache goes from 20 megabytes from the 5960 all the way up to 25 megabytes of level 3. Now there are certainly some details which is just unknown at the moment such as for example what the turbo clock speed is. We know for example with the 5960X that it's 3.5 gigahertz with a 3 gigahertz base but all we know at the moment is the 6950X has a base of 3 gigahertz. But still Perhaps the key thing here is that, essentially, from what we understand, the processor will be backwardly compatible with current X99 motherboards. Now, the usual caveats will probably uh, apply. You may need, for example, a BIOS update for full support of your processor. Maybe it might act a bit hinky if you don't fully update it, particularly if you've got like a, an older or a cheaper board, and we all know that. But... Theoretically, you should just be able to stick your processor, let's say the 6950X, right into the board of your current board and be rather happy. Now, the memory compatibility, once again, supposedly supported, and I say supposedly because people obviously run memory out of spec all the time and not necessarily listen to Intel's recommend recommendations, but with the Haswell E lineup, it's 2133, that's DDR4, of course, but Broadwell E kicks us up quite a few notches, actually, to 2400. Now, obviously, that's going to be offset in terms of the peak bandwidth, simply because you are dealing with that extra core count, extra thread count, but it's certainly appreciated. Perhaps the biggest piece of news, however, is the fact that these processors are going to be launched very soon, well at least relatively soon, the first half of 2016. Now you may say to yourself, well, that's kind of a long time. It's not tomorrow, right? True, but it's arguable that if you've got a decent processor now, and by decent processor I'm not talking about an E6600, we're, you know, referring to something pretty good, like even 2500K, 2600K that's fairly well overclocked, something along those lines, for this year you're definitely going to be fine, even with DirectX 12. And we are, of course, talking from a gaming point of view for just a moment. In a moment we'll, ca we'll discuss it more for like high-end video editing and that type of stuff. But if you have a fairly good rig for gaming at the moment, honestly, even if you've got a decent GPU, and decent GPU would be like a GTX 970, GTX 980, perhaps even the previous generation, let's say the GTX 770, if you're not looking for ultra super duper resolution, you're probably going to be pretty pretty good for this year. And so honestly, I'd suggest maybe saving your pennies. Skylake is certainly an attractive option and would at least get you on the DDR4 ladder, but at the moment, the processor prices are just absolutely ridiculous. Um, I was looking just the other day on eBay, uh, oh, sorry, not eBay, Amazon, uh, UK, and they're asking like 400 Great British Pounds. Some retailers are doing slight specials, and I say slight simply because the, the specials are 
well, they're not really that special. For example, overclockers.co.uk, I'm not name dropping, I'm just using examples. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. I have to use that caveat in videos now for obvious reasons. They're doing it, last time I looked anyway, for around 385 if memory serves. That's including uh, that. Obviously your mileage may vary depending on your country. Me point being, if you've got, let's assume for the sake of argument, a 2700k, 2600k or a 46 90 or something along those lines and it's fairly good you know you've got a decent amount of ram in there is it really worth you upgrading to skylake for a fairly modest performance boost well yeah to a degree it's nice but i would argue that the primary reason to move to um skylake at least for now is the platform benefits so with this news that it will be um x99 LGA 2011-3 compatible, it's certainly very appealing to go the X99 route. And for example, you could get something along the lines of a 5820K for now. Now, once again, just using Amazon, you can get a 5820K, uh, obviously that means fully unlocked, that's a 6-core processor, that would be around 305. Now, what about the lineup of Broadwell E? Obviously, once again, all of this is unconfirmed. I have to point that out. But the low end one, the basically the replacement for the 5820K is going to be the 6800K. Exactly the same number of threads. 6, 12. Um, boost clocks unconfirmed. 15 megabytes of level 3. Then you've got the higher end one, which is the 6850, which is pretty much. You know, it, it's nice, but to be honest with you, I think the average person is going to want to stick to the 6800. Same number of core threads. Difference here, of course, is you've got a slightly higher base clock, possibly, potentially more PCIe lanes. It's not been confirmed, however. But if you really want the, you know, the ultra duper manly one, that would be like the 6900K, which has 816 respectively, which is pretty much the highest end one you've got now, equivalent, 20 megabytes of level three. So I guess you could almost say um, that the 6900K, uh, 6900K, is I guess you could say it's a replacement for the current high-end model, which is the 5960X. It's got the same amount of cores, same amount of threads, the main difference is a very, very slight uh, tweak in the clock speed. But honestly, are you really going to notice that? Probably not. Obviously, the process node is going to change, which could be a good thing, obviously, if you're overclocking power consumption and all that bollocks. But generally, it's kind of a like for like. So if you've got the highest end, it's probably def well, it's definitely not worth switching to the 6900. The highest, highest, highest end at the moment uh, obviously, um, I'm sorry, in the future, obviously, is the 6950X. Now, the 6950X is 14nm, runs, once again, with 10, thread, uh, 10 cores, 20 threads. That's going to be a monster, but it's also going to be expensive. You're looking like a thousand bucks. Now, my opinion, uh, before we start getting to the second piece of this news, is that if you are interested in upgrading to an Intel platform, uh, that's the caveat, Intel platform, I would highly recommend the X99 for now, unless you can get a really good deal on Skylake. But, and once again, but is a strong word, that is only if you need those extra threads, for example, for creative work, for video editing. For example, let's say you've just launched a video editing business or a 3D rendering business, that type of thing. Great, certainly, definitely go X99, but if you're sticking with gaming for now, four threads, absolutely fine. Maybe if you're running something like an i3, then you could potentially say, yeah, that's definitely worth it. Finally, I do want to discuss the Broadwell EP. Now, I know it's slightly less about the EP, but it's going to have up to 22 cores per socket. That's 44 threads with an LLC, that's last level cache, of 55 megabytes. I just want you to think about that for a second. 22 threads. Now, just to clarify, this is not something you're going to find in your regular everyday PC. I mean, certainly you could technically do it. 
but it is of course the Xenon lineup. It's for work it's workstation, servers, enterprise. In other words, the super duper high end systems that are going to cost a few pennies to run. It is not going to be something that necessarily you or I are going to go out and buy for our average system. Once again, you could certainly do so if you have more money than sense, but for the average person, it's not going to be something you're probably that interested in. I would, however, like to point out, before I close off the video, that as you can imagine, Zen is also going to be out around that point. So, for the Intel enthusiast, if you need a processor right now, X99 is definitely the way forward. If you're looking for a very low heat, great low power, low heat based processor that doesn't necessarily have a ton of threads but great performance, particularly if you're looking for an IGP then, or even a small form factor, then certainly Skylake does have its place, but for now, in my opinion, stuff like a 5820K is a great potential upgrade, or better still, stick with what you've got, at least in my opinion, wait 6 to 12 months and then upgrade when all of the new technologies are going to be out. DDR4 prices are going to be considerably lower. And who knows what the hell is going to happen with AMD and Zen. And it's a really, really, really crappy feeling to be on a lemon. And by which I mean, it's not that the system you're buying right now is bad. But it's always rather frustrating to buy and then figure out that, you know, something's better a couple of weeks later or a couple of months later. But at least if you buy the X99, you can comfort yourself by theoretically being able to upgrade to a super duper high end processor that's got like, you know, more cores than probably you could ever want. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Sorry for being a bit off today. I think it's a bit of low blood sugar. I think I need to eat or something like that. Energy levels are kind of like failing me. I feel like I'm just about to be like kind of fall out of my chair. So I think I need food. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.